Look at these two pictures. The first picture is of Thar Desert and the second picture is of Antarctica. We know Thar Desert is too hot while Antarctica is too cold. Now, why do you think these two places have different temperatures? Now, these two places experiences extreme temperature that is Thar Desert is too hot while Antarctica is too cold because these two places have different geographical locations. See, in this globe, we can see that Thar Desert is located near the Tropic of Cancer. That is, Thar Desert is located near the tropical zone. While Antarctica, as we can see from the globe, is situated in the polar region. Now, since these two places are located in different latitudinal zones, so the amount of sun's heat received by these two places also varies. Let us see how. Thar Desert, as we just discussed, is located near the Tropic of Cancer. So, in other words, we can also say that Thar Desert is located in the Torrid Zone. Now, this storage zone or the equatorial region receives maximum sun's heat because the sun's rays coming to this zone are concentrated over a small area. See, sun rays are spread only this much in the equatorial region. Now, as we proceed towards the poles, the scattering of the sun rays increases. See, in this picture, we can see that the sun rays are spread over a wide area in the higher altitudes or near the poles. Now, why in the equatorial region, the sun rays are concentrated over a small region, while in the polar region, the sun's rays are scattered over a wider area? The sun's rays are concentrated in the equatorial region while they are spread across a wide area in the higher latitudes because of the spherical shape of the earth. See, in this picture we can see that the earth is not a quadrilateral but it has a spherical shape. So, due to this spherical shape of the earth, the rate of insulation also varies. Let me explain you how. See, in the equatorial region, the sun's rays are concentrated. So, the rate of insulation is higher in the equatorial region. And due to this reason, the equatorial region has higher temperature. Now, as we move towards the poles, the scattering of the sun's rays increases. That is, the sun's rays are spread over a wide area. And due to this reason, the rate of insulation received in the higher altitudes decreases. As a result, the higher altitudes have lower temperature. So, now can you relate why Thar Desert, which is located near the Tropic of Cancer, has higher temperature, while Antarctica, which is located at the Southern Pole, has lower temperature. So, here we see that due to spherical shape of the Earth, the rate of insulation received by different places in the world varies. The rate of insulation is highest at the equator, while the rate of insulation decreases as we move towards the higher latitudes. Now, I just discussed that the earth is not a quadrilateral, but it is spherical in shape. And due to this reason, the sun's rays coming towards the earth strikes the earth's surface at different angles. The sun rays strikes the equator almost vertically or perpendicularly while the sun rays strikes the pole at smaller angles. I will explain you how. See, in this picture we can see a tree. Now, if we draw a perpendicular line to the earth's surface, then this 
is the sun ray that strikes the equator. Now, if we draw an angle, we will see that the sun rays will make 90 degree with the earth's surface. So, from this picture, we understand that the sun rays strikes the equator at 90 degree. That is, the sun rays are perpendicular at the equator. Now, as we proceed towards the poles, the angle of incidence, that is, the angle at which the sun's rays strike the earth's surface, decreases. See, here if we draw perpendicular line, then it will make an angle which is lesser than 90 degree. Again here, if we draw another perpendicular line, then we will see that the sun rays will make even smaller angle. So, we see that as we move towards the poles, the angle at which the sun rays strikes the earth's surface decreases. So, in the previous slide, I discussed that the sun's rays are vertical at the equator. That is, the equator receives direct sun rays, while the sun's rays strikes higher latitudes at smaller angles. So, higher latitudes experience slanting sun's rays. Now, as the sun's rays are direct or vertical at the equator, so the rate of insulation is also higher at the equator compared to that in the higher latitudes because at higher latitudes, the sun's rays are slanting. So, the rate of insulation is less at higher latitudes. So, here we see that the direction of sun's rays also affects the rate of insulation. The rate of insulation is highest when the sun's rays is vertical or direct, while the rate of insulation is lower where the sun's rays are slanting. Now, we will discuss another factor that affects the rate of insulation. Now, before we proceed with our lesson, let us try to answer this question. In which region is the rate of insulation the highest? Equatorial region, polar region or temperate region? Well, the correct answer is equatorial region. In equatorial region, the rate of insulation is the highest because it receives direct sun rays and the sun's rays are concentrated over a small region. So, the correct answer is equatorial region. Now, let us discuss another factor that affects the rate of insulation. Let me tell you that the earth's surface and the earth's atmosphere are heated unequally on receiving the sun's rays. Due to this unequal heating of the earth's surface and the earth's atmosphere, there exist temperature differences between them. As a result, there is circulation of air and water molecules within the atmosphere and in the ocean bodies. Let me explain you how. As the oceans present at the earth's surface gets heated, the water molecules present in the oceans evaporates. Now, as the water molecules evaporates, they join the air molecules present in the earth's atmosphere. Now, we know that hot air rises and the cold air sinks as they are heavier. Now, this continuous rising of hot air and sinking of cold air sets up convectional currents or in other words, we can say that the heat is constantly transferred by the process of convection. Now, as more heat is transferred by convection, so the intake of solar energy by the earth's atmosphere also increases. This affects the rate of insulation. So, in the previous slide, we discussed that unequal heating of the earth's surface 
and atmosphere initiates circulation of air and water molecules. This circulation of air and water molecules sets up convectional currents. Now, as convection is more, the rate of insulation also increases as the intake of solar energy by the earth's atmosphere also rises. So, these are the important factors that affect the rate of insulation. The first factor is the spherical shape of the earth. Due to spherical shape of the earth, we saw that the rate of insulation is highest at the equator while the rate of insulation decreases in higher latitudes. The next factor is direction of sun's rays. As the sun's rays are vertical at the equator, so the rate of insulation is highest at the equator while as the sun's rays are slanting at the poles so the rate of insulation decreases as we move towards the poles. The last factor that affects the rate of insulation is unequal heating of the earth's surface and the atmosphere. Now, as the rate of insulation varies across the latitudes, the temperature prevailing in these latitudes also varies and this results in the existence of heat zones. So, now we will discuss about the heat zones of the world. The first heat zone of the earth is the torrid zone. Now, we have discussed earlier that the equator receives the maximum sun's heat or the rate of insulation is highest at the equator because here the sun's rays are direct and the sun's rays are concentrated over a small region. Now as the rate of insulation is highest at the equator, so the torrid zone experiences very high temperature. Now, this storage zone exists between the Tropic of Cancer in the north to Tropic of Capricorn in the south and the equator passes through the middle of this zone. Now, this zone has high temperature round the year because here the rate of insulation is very high. Now, Torrid zone is also known as tropical zone. The next heat zone of the world is temperate zone. Now temperate zone exists in northern part and also in the southern hemisphere. The northern temperate zone prevails between arctic circle and tropic of cancer in the northern hemisphere while the southern temperate zone exists between tropic of capricorn and antarctic circle now as i have mentioned earlier that as we move towards the higher latitudes the sun's rays become slanting and also the sun's rays are concentrated over a small region as a result higher latitudes experiences lower temperature now, the sun's position is not fixed throughout the year. The sun's position varies with season. The sun's rays are vertical at the Tropic of Cancer in summer. So, since the sun's rays are vertical at the Tropic of Cancer, so here the rate of insulation is very high. So, the northern part of the temperate zone experiences warm summers while at the same time that is in summer the sun's rays are very slanting at the tropic of capricorn so the southern part of the temperate zone during summer experiences lower temperature during winter the sun's rays are vertical at the tropic of capricorn so, during winter, the southern part of the temperate zone experiences higher temperature while the temperature is quite low in the northern part of the temperate zone. So, here we see that the temperate zone experiences warmer summer and cooler winters. 
in other words there is a significant change in temperature in summer and winter now we will discuss about the third heat zone of the world the next heat zone of the world is frigid zone now just like temperate zone frigid zone is also found in the northern part and in the southern part in the northern part the frigid zone exists between the north pole and the arctic circle while in the southern part the frigid zone exists between the antarctic circle and south pole now this frigid zone never experiences direct rays of the sun because the sun's rays are never vertical beyond the tropics so this frigid zone experiences slanting rays of the sun throughout the year and also the sun's rays are scattered over a wide region so the frigid zone experiences very low temperature round the year so now can you relate while antarctica is too cold and is always covered with snow and ice this is because antarctica is located in the southern frigid zone and therefore it has very low temperature round the year so these are the different heat zones of the world the first one is torrid zone torrid zone has high temperature throughout the year the next is temperate zone temperate zone exists in the northern part and in the southern part and in temperate zone there is significant change in temperature in summer and winter the heat zone that is located in the extreme part of the globe is the frigid zone this frigid zone experiences very low temperature round the year so we can see that our world is differentiated into different heat zone and these heat zones experiences different temperatures so in today's lesson we discuss about the factors that affect the rate of insulation direction of sun's rays and unequal heating of the earth's surface and the earth's atmosphere and finally we discuss about the heat zones of the world they are torrid zone temperate zone and frigid zone in our next video we will discuss about the factors that affect the distribution of temperature across the globe don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon you can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the delta step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to our 5000 amazing videos as per your school syllabus master each topic with our adaptive practice technology get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests get all your doubt resolved instantly learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy but it's rewarding too so register for free now